everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have a friend of the Fire It Up with CJ show, Guy Fenley, back again. Welcome, Guy. Thanks, CJ. We're talking about Guy is the founder and director of the Life of Learning Foundation. And on Sunday, March 21st at 9.30 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time, he is going to be doing the seven simple practices to realizing your highest spiritual possibilities. Um, and you can find that um, more about that class at guyfinley.org. And we'll be having a little link that you can see on the bottom of the right screen to sign up for and that it's class. Really just, it's really just guyfinley.org forward slash practices. And it's free to everybody. It's a completely free uh, webinar on the 21st. Okay. Now give us a sense of how, why now? What tell us a little bit about the, what the idea is about the highest spiritual possibilities, and what prompted you to create this class? Well, there's a couple elements, CJ. One of them is that uh, since COVID, uh, we have not been able to meet in our beautiful building here in Southern Oregon, so I took all the talks online, and I've been giving these free talks twice a week, although there's four meetings. Since uh, this whole uh, rigmarole started, and we thought that the best way once a month would be <clears throat> to com create a complete new webinar, something that was inclusive, something that someone could, if they wanted to, get in advance through a small donation if they want it a special e-course that i write and record for this webinar and on that day sunday the 21st you don't need the extra material you can join for free and we begin to explore these ideas now why you know i'm i've been uh, i've been at this a really long time uh, longer than one would imagine and I am always uh, asked one way or the other when I do my seminars or these free workshops, because each webinar has a full hour dedicated just to a dialogue between myself and the people that join. And everybody is essentially always asking, well, okay, this sounds good. Uh, so how? The big how question. And the problem is that how always involves comparison on the end of the person receiving the instruction. So the minute you say, well, look, <clears throat> uh, it requires that you take this new knowledge that you're going to hear and that you act on the knowledge. If you don't act on the knowledge, there's, it's useless to you. So then comes up questions, well, well, what do I do then with what I see and learn? So I wanted to put together a, a concise set of practices that because of the way they're described and as I will reveal them, that you, you, you can't fail. You can't fail if you attempt any of these practices. Why can't you fail? Because the, the point of the practice isn't to bring someone to some perfected state they imagine, which is why most of us, if we start practices, stop because they don't get us there, or we don't start the practice because we imagine, I'm not going to get there, it sounds too complicated. And all of that's just a big mind game on the part of a consciousness that really doesn't want have anything to do with going through this creative process of being reborn. So these seven exercises are my take over 50 some plus years of teaching, what it is that an individual needs to begin to understand through their own work so that they can understand through that work, there is nothing in the universe that can stop them from gaining some kind of self-realization. Not, nothing can stop that. And if you can get a person to just go through the first hurdle, which essentially 
is meeting a limitation. We want practices that amplify things we're already proud of about ourselves, things that we already have a path to and through that are known and that we essentially have these, uh, these uh, conditioned uh, sensations built into our psyche so that we want the reiteration and the re repetition of those experiences. That is not spiritual life. Real spiritual life has no repetition in it at all. So that the task through these exercises is for a person to get to the point where they realize that meeting any limitation in their attempt to discover the truth of themselves is the truth of themselves inviting them to go through that limitation to realize it isn't real. Mm. It's smoke and mirrors, but you've got to get a person to the point where they're willing to uh, stand their inner ground long enough to get a glimpse of this new truth about themselves that they are created to succeed in revelation. Mm. Okay, I've gotten your seven practices. I have um, something that I wanted to kind of put through the, let's put this through the grinder, <laughs> okay? Let me guess what this part is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what my problem is? Oh, divine, can you, I'll tell you what it is. Wait, so wait, wait, it. the great Karnak <laughs> I miss Johnny Carson. Yeah. I love him. CJ. Uh, <laughs> okay, here's what it is. Too bad. Too bad, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what it is. And and actually, I was picking something that I think um, is not only something that I probably feel, but a lot of other people are feeling at this moment. We and um, because we're all connected, right? So. I feel the crushing pain of the disharmony that is happening in the world. And I am someone, my strength, quote unquote, strength is being someone who is biased for action. You know, it's like, I'm going to go solve the world's problems, you know, put my cape on, eh, you know, fly through, the, <laughs> fly through the planet and like make stuff happen. Okay. So that is my um, quote unquote strength. And um, that is what is known. I like to make things happen. Perhaps sometimes the weakness on the other side of this is I'm pushing things forward versus flowing with the divine. Now, this time around, I've been thinking, CJ, haven't you gone through this rodeo <laughs> several times? <laughs> pushing, trying to make things happen, it, and versus flowing when you are responding for someone who is asking to have something happen is a very, very different thing. And um, when, I, when I try to figure out what is the spiritual truth of which I'm facing right now, it's patience. Um, being impatient for results, being patient enough to wait for the spiritual flow to come to come to my door and swim with it versus kind of like right now I'm you know I'm kind of swimming and pushing and making this thing happen yeah. and and I bring it up because I think a lot of us are impatient you know it's been a year it's been exactly a year since we've been trapped in our houses um, CJ, CJ. Yeah. yes it's now it hasn't been a year the year exists in your head. Did stuff happen? Everything has come unglued, but not because the conditions unglued things. The conditions merely revealed a consciousness that was not prepared to meet itself so head on for this period of time called a year. Okay. Our task is to understand <clears throat> that we have so many, I won't use the word mistaken, although it's, it's accurate. We have so many incomplete ideas, CJ, about like, what is, what is this God 
that I think I want to serve? What is this impatience? And how does impatience tie into the fact that there's no moment that unfolds in creation that isn't the perfection of the creation in which it unfolds? And, and if that's true, then where am I in that scenario? What is my place when I'm full of this pain that justifies itself by having something outside of itself to blame itself on. Our work, and by the way, the point of these seven practices that I will be covering, is to start an understanding, and I'm, I, I don't know if we ever discussed this, but it sure is apropos now, the original meaning of the word patience long, 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 long ago, when human beings had conscience, which they don't now, or more accurately, it's been put to sleep, it's been drugged into some form of despair. The meaning of the word patience is to suffer yourself. Mm. Something that almost none of us have even a clue about what it means or how to do it. Mm. So we have this pain, not CJ's pain, not Guy's pain, not even the pain of the deer that are standing outside the door, the pain of being a creation, but with a specific role in the context of that relationship. As human beings, we are in a unique position, and not because I say so, but there's never been a teaching on this planet, any true teaching that doesn't confirm it, that our, our place is between heaven and earth. Not my will, but thy will be done. The, the whole idea of that there is a, a will that is timeless, eternal, that is the not just the progenitor, but the perfection of what we would call the flow. Because in the flow that we're talking about, there's nothing left over. W w tell me what's left over in the flow. Or is the flow the ceaseless revelation of creation that we as human beings alone can be a part of? And if I'm part of that flow, then there's no me to know something happened that shouldn't have or that I don't want downstream because whatever is in that position of that shouldn't be like this. Why is that? Why are they that way? All of that business belongs to a residual part of a mind asleep to itself and apart from the flow that only knows itself by being against what it says isn't part of the flow. Let that sink in. It shouldn't be that way means not only am I aware of what the flow is, but I'm the one who's determining what the flow is because I know what's wrong with it. Mm. Now, CJ, has there ever been a point, and I know the answer for you already, but I'm putting it to you as advocate. How many times in your life have you come into this, and we even talked about it, where you, you know, CJ is there banging on the, 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 the door, you know, let me in, let me in. I got important stuff to do, things to say, people to help, let me in. And life in its mercy says, nah. Come no. back. Yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. You, you, you're not quite ripe. <laughs> you know, we are only ripe consciousness receives relationship with reality. So I, I go away and I, and I begin to realize, you know, I, I, we were just, I'm 72 years old. I, I, how many times in my life, thank God, not so much really anymore, have I been sitting, maybe getting ready to do an interview or working on something, or my wife has an issue with something, a problem going on in our life, foundation, you know, COVID, what are you going to do, blah, blah, blah. And anxiety comes. How many times in my life did I just go, oh, I'm so glad you showed up. 
Mr. Anxiety? Because now I really know who I am and that something is really wrong and the fear is telling me exactly what I need to go do. I, what would I do without you, Mr. Fear, Mr. Worry, Mr. <laughs> anxiety? <clears throat> but you see, when we're in that place, we don't know that we're in a dialogue with a consciousness that is set against itself. And an insatiable one, as you well know, because it never stops finding places where things aren't as free as they should be. And to prove that they're not as free as they should be, I make myself a captive of the anxiety and fear telling me how to get things flowing again. No negative, st negative states, no bubkas about flow, okay? And if I'm negative, the problem isn't the world. The problem is, is that I'm so identified with an image that I live from and hold of myself <clears throat> that it's punishing me. So the solution isn't the power to change the world. The solution is to see where this consciousness in myself to start with is rendering me powerless by getting me to identify with nonsense so that I can feel real and important. And if I do that, CJ, what do you suppose happens? Um, the flow comes knocking at your door. You're in the flow, girl. <laughs> You're, you're in the flow, and not only are you in the flow at that point, but by the grace of God, you can recognize all that is not. Not just in yourself, trying to drag you back down into that content of old consciousness, but your friends and family, and people who come to you with their anxiety and their fear, blaming it, the loneliness on COVID and all the rest of that. And you know better than that now. You don't judge them, but you have new eyes to see what those eyes cannot yet see. Okay, so I'm going to translate what I think you just said so that I can right. put it in CJ's different mind. Yes, so, let's oh, get um, in, so let's get into that mind. okay, so I started off by saying, "Guy, I want to save the world," and like it's not time. I and I keep on actually when I do when I tune in, I get the messages. It's not time right now. It doesn't even matter. I go to the I Ching, same message. Go to my guides, same message. It's like, but somehow I don't want that message to be so. Ah, yes. Okay. All right. So there's ah, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yes, that is exactly right. Yeah. So I you hear know, the messages. I, I, yeah. I'm waiting for my teacher. No, no, that, that's not the right teacher. No, let's see. No, no. See, you, you don't understand a uh, moment. Yes. This is my moment. Nonsense. Yeah, I'm going to like, mom, can I? Okay, dad, can I? Okay, teacher, can I? Who yeah. says that I can do what I actually want to do? That's but right. no, I can, I'm getting these messages no matter what door I knock on. It's like not yeah. ready, not yeah. ready. Not so ready. so why, why is it that I resist any form of revelation that's telling me the problem isn't out there, but that I must wait? Yeah. How, how must I wait? Patiently patiently suffering everything in CJ that CJ wants CJ to believe is top flight. There's no questions. That's why I can dismiss all the instruction that I received through intuition, because apparently they didn't get the memo that I'm supposed to be the Her Majesty straightening out the everyone and everything that I need. <laughs> okay, so so here comes CJ with her misguided thoughts. And I'm, you know, I, and, and the message I keep on getting back over and over again, I'm getting the revelation, be patient, wait to wait for, and you know, the I Ching is like, wait for accumulation of wisdom and knowledge and plans to sink in so that you are the ripe fruit to go out. Okay, so I'm getting these messages. And I think this is, and it comes in different forms, right? Right now in the, the world, it's like, I am sick of wearing my mask. I am sick of being stuck inside. Don't I get, am don't impatient. Get don't get negative right while you're talking to me now. Okay. So people are getting impatient, right? And people are feeling different levels of impatience. This is my, my form is coming in every single one of those things. So the part is, What's known is like going out without a mask, 
um, going and saving the world. Those are things that are known. But what is unknown to me and what is knocking on my door is a revelation to say, what about patience and jumping into the flow of things? So how do we know we are in the flow of things? How do we know that we're synchronized with this greater spiritual power that is around us? Am I exhausting? You better need to, you may need to drink another one of your supplemental juices before I can. CJ, this is perfect. I, I like talking to you because you're so open and you do want to understand this. Yeah. If if I if I'm if I know I'm in the flow, I'm not in the flow, CJ. If I know I'm in the flow, I'm not in the flow. Absolutely. Try to see it, CJ. Oh, I'm in the flow. So I'm outside of the flow that I know. Mm -hmm. There's no me outside of the flow. Who, who's CJ without the divine, without this intelligence, this love? We are instruments of this relationship. And when we think to ourselves, as we all do, because that's been the, our conditioning, even God help us, our so-called spiritual teachings now, all talk about these images where I have this, you know, everything's going so great. And in that moment, what's happened? What I call being in the flow, my mind is fastening itself to the, the various conditions that are folding around me. And, oh, this is great. This is going good. This is good. So now there's me and an image. Oh. And the image I have is full of all the things that I want. The cup runneth over. And so I think, oh, this is beautiful. But the problem is, and this is part of it, is that the cup of life is refilling itself. It's not filled and then it's done. It is a ceaseless outpouring into something that ceaselessly receives it and that ceaselessly gives it back so that it can be poured back in again. That's life. That's the flow. And there's no one there in the flow. There is the flow that becomes a person's life but the minute that I identify with and want the flow to continue or hate those who have taken me out of the flow, it proves I don't know anything about the flow. Oh, and that's there, great. Yeah. And there, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. Okay. I'm guilty as charged because here's, and here's, I think the thing that's so interesting is the amount of spiritual conditioning that I yeah. didn't realize that I was um, delusioned I about. Not I, not I, this consciousness. See, I want to be the one who knows God. I want to be the one who walks outside and the angels come and they start telling me, good job, CJ. If it weren't for you, this world would have fallen apart a long time ago. See, that's what we want. We want to be the white knight, the white knightess who's, who, who saves ourselves and everyone else. And there is no one there by that name. Mm. There is understanding or there is not. There is love or there is not. But we have intuition. We gain insight. But the insight which is to the heart of the practices I'm going to talk about on the 21st, is where it is that I have, by without knowing it, been part of a process of a consciousness that identifies with its content and then calls that content my character. And if that character is good, I love my life. And if that content is resisting what's taking place, then I'm in conflict with it and I hate life. And that's the pendulum of this painful nature that we live from. It, it, we have to understand that the pendulum, and this is pure Buddhism, you know, it's mutually dependent. No side exists without the other. And we want one side without the other. I want power and pleasure. I want possessions, but I don't want any pain connected to anything that challenges them. Well, you can't have that. I want it, guy. <laughs> that's my two-year-old. Yes, that's exactly. I don't want to have any pain, guy. <laughs> Why are you making me feel this way? I want to be in the flow where rainbows and puppy dogs exist all the time. Okay. 
So look at how good this is. Look what we're getting. Yeah. So if no, I really feel. I, I actually feel that two year old, and I mean it's inside of me. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what? I have to be patient until you get my little pony. Yeah, that's exactly, oh. that's exactly right. So look what we're talking about. Do you know anybody, CJ? And I'll include myself. Do you know anybody that doesn't have pain? No. So then is it your pain? Is it your brother's pain, your sister's pain, your mother's pain? Is it the pain of the person who checks you out in the supermarket? Or is it our pain? It's our pain. And that yeah. helps because it allows me to put like a little thing around my superhero. I'm actually experiencing the pain of everyone. <laughs> CJ, you, you ready for a very tough lesson? Yeah, you're going to do another Smackdown guy. Never console yourself. That's what all this is about. That's what a lot of the spiritual nonsense is, is how, how yeah, oh, well then, oh, it's my pain. So then, well, I'm doing my share. Never console pain. Use the pain to change the nature creating it. Never console pain. Use the pain become aware of it sufficiently to change the consciousness that doesn't just keep creating the pain through some form of identification, but then when the pain comes, then it consoles itself and says, oh, well, you know, it has to be this way or this couldn't have been otherwise. And you're really basically a good person. Yeah, you just chewed that person's head off their shoulders, but you didn't mean to do it because you're really a vegetarian. You know, all of those things, <laughs> all of those ways in which this mind talks to itself trying to get itself to be okay in the moment and that self will never be okay cj okay so how so what does this mean i have to change the part of my consciousness that is not okay with being patient and waiting no no, no not change it become aware of the fact that that consciousness can only lie and that I'm identified with every movement it makes, particularly when it consoles me. That's what has to happen. You can't change CJ. I can't change. Look, you and I have certain similarities. I've been, I've been, I, I beat my head against the wall for the first 30 years of my spiritual work until a great master said to me one day when I was talking to him, he said, you know, you're just gonna have to drive yourself crazy. That was his, his diagnosis of me at that point. And of course I thought, well, that's not a very good thing to say, how unkind. He couldn't have been more right. Like some kind of bulldog clinging to images of oneself because I have been this person who is good, right, true, politically correct, ambitious in the right way, not in the wrong way, ambitious in the right way, you know, all of the ways in which we console the conflict inherent in trying to get life to line up with our creation of heaven. We don't create heaven, we are a creation of heaven. And when we understand that, we're in the flow between what is revealing itself and what is being changed through that revelation. So the only thing I can do at this point is to be conscious. Awake, aware, and conscious as you can of the pain that's pushing you. Okay. You, you, if, you have, if you had a girlfriend, a boyfriend, husband, wife, everybody, I'm talking to everybody now, how long would you hang out with somebody that when you opened the door, they came in and the first thing they did was they either grabbed you by the back of the head and started pulling you, or they grabbed you by the front of the chest and started pushing you. How long would you associate with someone who 85% of the time was pushing or pulling you to do what that person was telling you you needed to do so they'd be happy? How long would you hang out with that person? Well, I guess I've been hanging out with how many, how old am I? <laughs> 58. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would do it for a really long time until I made myself crazy. We all, <laughs> we have all done that because we 
have yet to discover that that pushing, shoving, anxious, ambitious person isn't I. Mm. And so the work isn't finding ways to change that consciousness through some kind of effort. The work is to see that the efforts that we take to change it, keep it in place, because it means that not only are we sustaining that nature, but we're involved in its creation. Resistance is repetition. Repetition is reincarnation. Reincarnation is the reincarnation of the thing that we don't want. So that our work is not to resist these manifestations when the anxiety comes. It's not to become some spiritual person, you know, uh, doing their prayers. That, that prayers are not meant to resolve pain. Prayer is to bring you into the person inside of you who knows the pain is a lesson. And if you'd learn it, you would be that much freer and in the flow the next moment. Mm. So I'm just, just like welcome in this pain and be conscious of it. You know what? St. Paul, a, 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 one of the Christian saints, he said, in your patience, possess you your soul. Hmm. See how that starts to make sense? Mm -hmm. God help me. I don't know what to do with this pain. I, I can't stand sitting here. I can't stand masks. I have so many things I don't like. And because of the conditions, I don't like them even more than I didn't like them before. And I don't know what to do other than to have someone or something to blame for a pain that I am inherently complicit in its continuation. Mm. And that's the great lesson. But what is the lesson in that? Again, both Eastern and Western teachers, I guess I'm going to have to die to myself. Oh, so that's what that means. Sell all and follow. Oh, so, oh, oh, I was just wanting to sell the stuff I didn't want. Not, 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 not this entire identity that is a construction of a half-witted, unconscious mind <laughs> that creates its own conflict and then looks for solutions to it through consoling itself. <laughs> Because when you see all that, as you can hear me speaking, you go, good God, thank you. Thank you, I was blind. I right. literally was blind. And the blind shall follow the blind and both, both fall in a pit. No wonder my life's the pits. <laughs> I'm following right. myself. So I'm looking at my identity that wants to save everyone that wants to be the righteous one to that you know the right person on the political spectrum whatever it is i'm looking at that part of me and saying that part what is that part how is that part i don't even know what, what i'm hearing from i'm taking away is like you know that part is actually you know, you kind of want you, the tendency is for me to repeat that part because it's, it's familiar. It's it feels familiar, comfortable. To, that's CJ to, to repeat the pain that you don't want. Right now, how can I create pain and then not want my own creation? Because I don't believe I'm creating it. Mm -hmm. I believe the conditions are creating my consciousness. When the truth is, my consciousness is the conditions I experience. Mm -hmm. That's what my experience is. I experience my consciousness, but I want to blame the conditions for my consciousness. That is what a sleeping human being is and does, but only because they're still in a dream. Now, it doesn't mean, CJ, that if you are, feel an inclination towards something, that you don't follow the inclination because there will come a time and a place when what you have been given as a human being will be asked to come into play. 
but it doesn't come into play through a movement. No movement on this planet has ever changed this planet. Movements are swings of pendulums. Mm. It is individuals who dying to themselves and the part of them that's part of this mob, left or right, discovering that no mob can do anything other than create the very condition it says it wants to change. Because that's what it does. That's called second force. Mm. The more I resist something, the more I strengthen the very thing I'm trying to escape. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) That's funny. And it's true. I mean, I I understand the truth of that. So, you know, whether it's I'm impatient, the world is so messed up for these following reasons, guy, I need to go protest and have a movement, you know, join the whatever movement, whatever the movement is that you desire. But I love the idea that none of these movements make a difference, because really what you're doing is it's like life is about you know, action, reaction, and, you know, you're just creating this pendulum that goes back and forth. The yeah. only way in which you really create change is through dying of self, that part of you that wants to like, go save the world, CJ. It's like, no, you sit down, you know, whatever it is. I don't know what I'm going to say to that, but like, come in here, honey, what's going on? Why do you want to save the world? What's happening with you? And where and- is, where is the center of that pendulum. Is it a part of the pendulum or does the pendulum come out of the part? For there to be a pendulum, there has to be a center. The center doesn't move left, the center doesn't move right. The center allows for left and right movement. Right. Hmm? That center is the place where life comes in, expresses itself, and is intended to go back out, meaning the ceaseless exchange. Uh, An awakened human being is not someone who has a position, but who waits for revelation to provide action. Mm. Real action does not come from a position. Mm. Comes from a revelation. Uh, Revelation part of the flow. See how beautiful this is? It is so beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm full of action. I'm Action Jackson. Really? Well, yeah, and that's why I'm angry, because people aren't taking the action I need them to take. I'm anxious because I don't think the action I'm going to take is going to change things. I'm fearful that the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket because people won't do what I tell them to do to be free. Where real action is seeing that consciousness that wouldn't be set against anything if it weren't in conflict with it before that moment began. Mm. Dying to myself is the action. And in the action, conscience sits there. And then by the grace of God, I'm literally given what I need to do, when I need to do it, how it needs to be done. And I have not one ounce of identification with any of that movement because I've already let go of anything identified with being that in either way. of those pendulum. Yeah. yeah. See, this is you talk about the I Ching. This is you talk about the real, the real Taoism, the real Buddhism, the real Christianity, as far as I'm concerned. This is what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. What is the what is the heart of that cross where where what is timeless vertical meets what is in time horizontal? What mm-hmm. is the heart of that cross? The heart of that cross is now. What is timeless intersecting what is in time and if we are in time and are there in that moment we receive the eternal understanding not just of a greater kingdom that we're already a part of but our role in time as given to us in the now in the perfect action of being the perceiver of the moment instead of the one perpetrating what the moment means through my conditioning very powerful It, it is i just See, I, I mean, you know this about me. We're good friends and we are friends. I, mm-hmm. I, this, this that we're talking about, it, the words aren't going to change anybody. But when you get your teeth into this a little bit and you begin to work 
with the understanding, just as a simple example. So I'm a pretty, I have always been type A, you know, like, watch out world I'm coming through, you know, I mean, God help the poor people in my past. I do. I, <laughs> I, I apologize to every human being I've ever met. Uh, but to, 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 to start seeing that I, I can't, in, it is impossible for me to inflict pain or suffering of any kind on another human being without having been in pain that I didn't know I was in when I did that. Mm -hmm. Because it's pain that gives me the actions that tell me that you're to blame for my pain and you're not to blame for my pain in one respect. You're a secret agent of the divine come to help me as my teacher in that moment to give me the lesson that I've been avoiding my whole life, which is I'm going to have to learn to be with Guy. I, I, I'm going to have to learn to see this man so thoroughly that none of the movement of what I've called myself can no longer convince me that that is myself because myself is none of these individual movements myself is the whole of these movements including the conflict in them including the revelation of that conflict and including being released from that conflict because now i live in a world that's conscious of it instead of being the unconscious instrument of it uh. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I got to love you, CJ. <laughs> I do. I know we've never met. I hope one day, God willing, you and your husband or boyfriend or whatever. We will come to Oregon, Merlin, yeah. Oregon. I love the fact that your foundation is in Merlin, Oregon, because you so much to me seem like some type of magical wizard. You with your bright raspberry colored juice <laughs> doing some alchemical thing over there before we started talking. I'm like, oh, I love it. Okay, so people- God willing, uh, God willing by the way, I'm gonna open the doors back to the public uh, in about five or six weeks. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm definitely gonna hold the annual talks in the pines this year only this year, I'm going to have it all outdoors just for the extra measure. Oh. Not for me. I'm not worried about that business. Um, but because that way, more people will be less afraid, I think. Yeah, to, to come. come. You know, there'll be a COVID hangover for a long time. And by the way, why? Because I know who I am. You know, we know there are people and you can't blame them. No one who's afraid understands that fear doesn't serve them no one who serves fear knows they're serving it but it gives me such a powerful identity because i for instance me i don't like masks but i obey i go into a supermarket i usually have it hanging down under my nose oh you're one of those <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and and somebody came in it and literally attacked me last week Oh. You know, what? why are you like that? And I said, you know what? I, I'm sorry. You're right. I, when I'm in here, I should have it. Or I'm not going to get upset with somebody who's afraid. If a kid came into your room crying because there was a lightning flash, you don't smack the kid. You understand that's the best that consciousness can do at that point. Now, take that idea and apply it to me. Mm -hmm. That's the best that consciousness can do in this moment. But there is something better that can see that that's the best and that there is better to come because awareness of a limitation already proves there's something superior to the limitation you're aware of. It's true. All right. <laughs> I guess I'll be patient. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm just I'm I'm playing up because I know that you are an actor and I'm being childish and, and ridiculous, which is part of my charm. Um, <laughs> that slipped out, didn't it? 
<laughs> at least I think my identity thing yeah, is yeah, part yeah. of my charm. You are whether so it is surreal and charming, <laughs> Whether it's a reality or not, that's yeah. the illusion I've set up for myself. Um, this has been so wonderful. I always enjoy so much having you on the show. And, and thank you for showing us your 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 alchemical drink, um, <laughs> creating you into Merlin himself. Guy Finley is the founder and director of the Life of Learning Foundation. And on March 21st at 930, you can go to guyfinley.org slash practices and go and hear the seven simple practices to realizing your highest spiritual possibilities. We've kind of, you've given me a test run, a little appetizer of appetizer. what to expect. Um, I can see that some of the um, um, lessons and practices of how to be in the spiritual um, poss highest possibilities were actually in this embedded in this dialogue. Um, nice. So please make sure to go and go to guyfinley.org slash practices to get the seven simple practices to realizing your highest spiritual possibilities. And it, and it is free. Everyone's invited. Tell your friends nothing to join. And when you go to that forward slash practices address at guyfinley.org, You'll 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 have to sign up for the workshop, uh, but again, there's no obligation of any kind. You're not you don't get hounded by emails, but you will then know about these. Like I said, I speak two to three times a week online, always for free. Everyone's invited, including my friend. <laughs> I promise not to have tantrums and be ridiculous. Actually, when I'm a student, I'm a completely different person. You wouldn't even notice me. <laughs> i'm very compliant I, my asian side comes up very, ding. Yeah. That's, you, that's just how i think of you <laughs> i'm not this like ridiculous out of control person i'm kind of very asian compliant so the i would great, be very different in class the, the demure season. yes <laughs> yes it's all an illusion. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much.